Welcome to Lesson 5.3, I can solve problems using the percent proportion. So two familiar words, percent, meaning per 100, and proportion. Remember, we can set up a proportion, and it's what's showing two quantities that remain equal. So, this is using algebra, and we are in pre-algebra, so let's get going on what we need. In a percent proportion, one ratio compares a part to a whole, and the other is equivalent or equal percent to that ratio as a fraction written with a denominator of 100. So it's really just saying, I know that one half is the same as 50%, but instead of writing that as 50%, I write it as one half is equal to 50 out of 100. 50 is one half of 100 and one is one half of two. So another example that they give is right here when they say three out of five is 60%. So three is the part, five is the whole, three out of five is the same as is 60%, 60%, meaning 60 out of 100. So again, vocabulary and understanding the words is very important to make sure that this goes smoothly for you. This is something that you're going to want to write down. This is the percent proportion. Later on, we're going to learn about a percent equation, but now we're looking at a percent proportion. So we're going to be showing two ratios that are equal to each other. One of them is the percent or the number out of 100, and the other is a fraction, the part out of the whole. Sometimes you'll see this, like you did up top, part over whole is equal to the percent out of 100. Since they're equal, it doesn't matter which is on the left and which is on the right, as long as the percent is over 100 and the part is over the whole. Notice how there's some words next to them that matter. The percent should always be over 100. When you hear the word is, that means that that is the part of meaning what it's out of the whole. Sometimes we'll see is as equals in this case though as well. Make sure you have this down. So finding the percent. It's very important that we are able to write down what we read. So here I see 22 is, remembering that my part is is. 22 is what percent, when there's a what, that generally is meaning that we don't know that, and that's what our variable is. And then we see of 110. So here it says, since 22 is being compared to 110, 22 is the part, 110 is the whole. What you need to find is the percent. So we let a variable represent what we don't know. And then we plug it all in to here. So again, in this case, it's flipped around, but that's okay for this to be flip-flopped. So we plug in our part, 22, out of our whole, is equal to what number out of 100? Remember, we solve proportions by using cross products. So we multiplied 110 times n and 22 times 100. For 2,200 is equal to 110n. We divide by 110 to get n by itself. And what we find is that n is equal to 20. So what that means is from our original sentence, 22 is what percent of 110? you can fill in what you found. 22 is 20% 20 of 110. It's like a big puzzle piece. You just determine what piece fits where and then put them together. Check your progress and notice these ones I've set up for you percent and then part of whole. Again, if they're reversed, it's okay. So 17 is what percent of 68? 17 is, that means that's my part what percent. We're looking for the percent. We're going to give that the variable. In the book it generally gives it n. I like to give it x. 
and then of 68 means that's my whole. So what we're looking for is the question mark or what the percent is out of 100 if 17 compared to 68. So here we do our cross products. We really get 68 times x is equal to 17 times 100 and then we divide by 68 and we get x equals 25 so what that means is 17 is 25 percent of 68 over here and a couple things stayed in I'm not really showing my work like this so 41 and 4 tenths is it's my part what percent of 52 92 excuse me so cross products would give me 92 times x is equal to multiply by 100 again we just move it twice to get x alone we're going to divide by 92 and we get 45 so again grand scheme of things this means that 41 and 4 tenths is 45 percent of that 92. So finding the percent given a part and a whole. So what if we were asked to find the part? I'm going to ask to find all three different parts. So it says what number is? That means we don't know our parts. We can leave that as P. 80% were given. That's the same as 80 out of 100. Of 500. So that's our whole. So we're going to let the percent be 80% and the whole be 500. You need to find the part. So we're going to let P represent what we don't know. Algebra is all about variables. So we plug in what number P out of 500 is equal to 80 out of 100. So we write the proportion. We use our cross products. To get P times 100, 500 times 80. We divide by 100 to simplify. We find out that the part is 400. So what that means is the number that is 80% of 500 is 400. Try some of these. Remember your question mark is your variable. What number is? So we're looking for our part. 35%, which we put over 100, of 48, which is our whole number, our denominator. So we have 35 times 48 is equal to 100 times what number? So we multiply 35 times 48. It's 1,680 which every time we are actually just dividing by 100. So we get that 16.8 or 16 and 8 tenths is 35% of 48. Over here, find, sometimes it'll just say find instead of what is. So find, meaning we're looking for our part, 12.5% out of 100 of 88. So cross products would be, we're going to do our 12.5 times 88. And we're eventually, and then we get 1100. And that's equal to 100 times P. So we divide by 100 get P alone and we get that 11 is what we found 12 and a half percent 
of 88. Find the whole. So again, same type of thing. You just need to know what your variable represents. So we have 14.4 is. Is means our part. 32% is our out of 100. Of what number? Remember the what means what is our variable. So we set them up. Part over the whole, which is unknown, is equal to the percent out of 100. Still using our cross products. Still dividing so that we can simplify for the variable. And then we fill in at the end. 14.4 is 32% of what number? 45. So again, we're given our part. 30, 23 and 4 tenths is. That is tells me it's my part. 30% is out of 100. Of what number tells me I'm not sure. Cross products. When we multiply 100 times 23 and 4 tenths, we get 2,300. Forty, and then we get 30 times W so we're going to divide by 30 to get W alone when we do that we're finding out that 23.4 is 30 percent of when we get W we get 78 one more 19 is my part, 62.5% out of 100, of what number? Cross multiply, divide to get your variable alone, what you find out is you can rewrite 19 is 62.5% of 30.4. Answer should make sense, too, because 19 times 2 would be 38, and that'd be, you know, so it's more than half of this number because it's 62.5%. In review, you want to put this in your notes, and we will check for this when you get to class. You want to make sure that you have different types to find the percents. So if you're asking to find the percent, knowing what your variable fits into, finding the part, and finding the whole. So you have an example of the word problem, an example of how you'd set it up, depending on which type of question you're being asked. Make sure you have this in your notes. Sometimes there are going to be percents that are greater than 100. For example, if I said that on a quiz it was out of 10, but I got a 12, well, my part is greater than my whole, so I would have scored more than 100%. Okay, so that's going to happen sometimes. So for example here, 6 is what percent of 5? 6 is being compared to 5, so 5 is the whole and 6 is the part. So we set it up as normal. 6 over 5 is what percent of 100? Still do our cross products. Still divide to get the variable alone, and then we get a number greater than 100. So when we get a number greater than 100 as a percent, it's okay. It means that 6 is 120% of 5. It's more than 100%. It's more than one whole. So you can try these. 12 is, 12 is my part, what percent, I don't know my percent, of 6, my whole number. So that's 100 times 12, which is 1,200. It's equal to 6P. Divide by 6. For P equals 200. So 12 is 200% of 6, which makes sense because 6, 100% of 6 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. So that's 200% of it. Double. Find, which means what is. We're looking for the part. 
175 percent that's 175 out of 100 of 18 our whole number cross products we do 18 times 175 is equal to 100 times P so we divide by 100 and we get P equals 31 and a half so that was my part so that means that 31 and a half is 175 percent of 18 so if we're looking for something a percent more than our whole our answer our part should be more Alright, last little bit here. Silver jewelry that is stamped with the numbers 925 means 92.5% of the metal used is pure silver and the rest is made up of other metals. If the bracelet has 11 grams of silver, how much does the bracelet weigh? So the percent is 92.5%. The part is, so we need to find the total weight or the whole. So 11 is, another way to say this would be 11 is 92.5% of what number? Remember what means we're looking for it. So we set up that proportion using part of a whole is equal to percent of 100. Do your cross products for 1,100 is equal to 92.5 W. Divide to solve for your variable, and we approximated here the bracelet weighs about 11 and 9 tenths grams. So, this is important to know because you guys are always trying to find out how you did on a test or quiz. Carmilla answered 23 questions correctly on her science test, she received a grade of 92%. How many questions were on the test? So she scored 23, that's the part. Her percent is 92. We're wondering how many total questions the whole test was out of. So 92% is 92 over 100. That's equal to 23 out of how many questions? W. So you cross multiply then divide by the 92 to get W alone, we get 25. That means that there are 25 questions on the test. A lot of info there, but again, making sure that you're just reading carefully, knowing is and of and percent and where they go in the proportion. See you soon.